I don't think we're, 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 we're to believe that Jesus Christ died and physically came back to life. No, I know you don't believe that, but what I'm yeah. saying is he sent down the gospel and the Torah, right? And these do say that. Yeah. And remember, they have a tradition for him. And what did I say before? Like it says in chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran, that Allah guides who those who follow Jesus, who make those who follow Jesus the uppermost. That becomes a problem for modern Islam, to be honest, because when you say that, then that obviously puts a massive issue in terms of the hadiths that they follow yeah. that contradict that. So you know, right, he eats, he drinks, right, he cries, for example, you see all these instances within the Bible, right? But, but he still has that nature of deity within him, but it's not open, or right? he's lessened himself to a state. That's why you, you, you hear from certain Muslims who say to you, why does Jesus not know the hour? But the problem is Jesus made himself lower than the angels. He's made himself lower than the angels, that means he's not higher than the Father. He doesn't, he's not have access to that information that he had when he was at that position with the Father. That doesn't mean he's less God within, within himself. What happens is he's lessened himself to become less. That's why the Bible talks about us as Christians humbling ourselves because Christ himself humbled himself to become a man or a creature. This, I mean, the, 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 the difficulty I have in understanding that is if Jesus himself was God in the flesh, when he was praying, who were these prayers directed to? Well, do you, you do understand that prayer is communication. He prayed to the Father. Father yeah, he prayed to the Father. We've got no problem with that. We okay. believe the Father is God and he prayed to the Father. And Jesus Christ is in human form, I said. As I said, he became in human form. He made himself lower than angels. So what's he going to do? Is he, is he going to be an atheist because he became human? No, he's going to be, he's going to have a God. He has a God. That's why Jesus says, I go to my God, your God. I go, yeah, I go to my God and your God in John 20, 17, I think it is. Praise God. Basically, yeah, that's why he says that. Not because he's limited within his nature, but because he limited himself of that nature of deity, right? In order to humble yourself to become that perfect next Adam or that second Adam to take on mankind's sins. And if you read the whole of the Old Testament and New Testament, it's easy to grasp it. I don't know, just the notion of God becoming man. So what, what, what part of the notion is wrong to you? I mean, God can do all things. Yes, you God, can that. God can do all things. And what does, what does the Quran say? The Quran actually says, God is unlike his creation, Surah 42.11. Yes. No, so if God's I, I, unlike his creation, then why would he be limited to not enter his creation? Of course God can enter his creation. It's, because you, there has to be a distinction because, between worshipping a figure of a man and worshipping God, which is eternal and everywhere. But we don't just worship a figure, a figure of man. Well, I'm the modern we worship modern through Christian Jesus Christ to the Father. And, uh, you know, when you go to a church, it's literally... Understandable. Yeah. But we worship G through Jesus Christ to the Father. By the Holy Spirit. That's how we worship the Father. Because the, Jesus Christ is the expressed image of God. And how does God want us to communicate with him? It, it would make no sense if he became a tree or he became a book. No, it makes more sense he became a man so he can communicate with us and to show us his expressed image. Not of just his, his face but or form. But of himself, he couldn't have done anything. Uh, he, could have, he only did that through the Father, as in through God. Yeah, but he also, he also, Without God, he couldn't have done anything. Yeah, but he also says he does whatever the Father does. In that same chapter you're referring to. So when he says, I of myself can do nothing, he's referring to that connection of deity between them. Because obviously they're connected. They're father and son. So of course they can't do, do anything apart from each other. But he does what the father does. That's what it says in John 5. So in the Tanakh, in the in Hebrew uh, uh, Torah, when it talks of God, you think God, Jesus is that God? That, that Moses, um, for example, was, was, was praying to in the in Mount of Sinai, in, the, in Sinai. Okay, in so Mount. there's different instances of, a God, of God in the Old Testament. For example, there's this character called the Angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, right? In, in, for example, you've got in your Quran, right? God is in a burning bush. And you, don't, you may not believe God is in that burning bush, but we have that same story in Exodus 3.14, right? It, this God is the Angel of the Lord, right? I think the Quran, uh, Moses says, I perceive a fire. Right, I, I know, I know he says that, yeah, I understand. I, I but I'm not. God is in the burning bush. No, no, I understand, I understand that's your religion. I'm just saying what, yeah, yeah. What that's, where that's come from or where you may think it's come from. Basically, my point is, in the, in the Old Testament, it says, that the angel of the Lord was in the bush. And then Moses turns around and says, oh, I want to see what's in this bush. And then he turns around and it says God called him from the bush. So it's clear that God was in the bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, we believe that. They're, they're but, but for us, it wasn't it just the communication. It says in Exodus 33, no, 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 it says in Deuteronomy 33, that God was in that bush in the form of fire. 
So we do believe that God can enter his creation. Just like Abraham, for example, you, you Muslims believe that Abraham is a prophet of God, correct? Right. But Abraham saw his God. In, in Genesis 18, God becomes a man in front of Abraham. And he sits down and eats. Is that in the tent? Outside yeah, the tent. tent's the memory. Right. So he becomes a man. And if you read Genesis 19, 24, right? But there's plural people that come outside the tent, not just one. Yeah, yeah, no, understandable. There's three persons that come to Abraham, right? Yeah. But those three persons are not the Trinity. They're two angels. If you read oh, later I, on in... I didn't mean the Trinity, I just meant... Yeah. It wasn't one God. One of them was... is God, right? Who's become man. One of them is God, right? And he's, he's in the form of man and he talks to Abraham, he converts with him. And then he says that he's going to go off and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He gets to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? After the angels get there, right? And he destroys it. And what it says is this. It says in Genesis 19, 24, that Yahweh, the name of God in the Old Testament, sent fire and brimstone from Yahweh in heaven. So there's two Yahwehs. There's Yahweh on earth and there's Yahweh in heaven. I think everybody here needs to be open-minded when, 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 when facts are presented. We right. have to be open-minded right. and accept the facts. Uh, or effect, uh, for example, when there's a fact that destroys your current understanding of something, you have to be open-minded to say that's going uh, to. This is now new knowledge, and it superseded my, uh, my 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 existing knowledge. The problem with with I guess speakers' corner today is that everybody comes with their view and tries to kind of push their view on on. No, to impose it. To impose it. And, yeah. and, and we're not being as open-minded as we want others to be. No, it's, it should be about expressing our beliefs in a. Yes, faithful way. Your belief and, and, and something new comes out of it, that's fine. Yeah. For me, Jesus is a prophet, he's the Messiah. I understand. Uh, and he, he's the only one actually in the, in the Quran which, which says he can perform miracles, he can bring people up from the dead. Right. But it does say only through God. As in without God, he couldn't have done this. Yes, he is the Messiah, yes, he is born miraculous. Right. But at the same time, it was only through the will of God that this was happening. Well, it says the Quran doesn't say that. From what I've read, it doesn't say through the will of God. It says he was given permission to do it. And if I give somebody a permission to do something, that means they've already got the ability to do it. For example, if I give, um, let's say, um, what's your name? <laughs> Sorry. If I give... DM, DM. If I give DM the, the permission to plant a seed in the ground, right? He already has the ability to do it. All I've said is, like, you have permission to do it. And that's, that's, that's for what I see from what ha it was happening. When Jesus so blows into the... the yeah. To do this. So he had the ability to cre create life. The problem is the Quran says that only Allah gives life. So that, that's another area of well, life. we. And, the, and the, one of the biggest mysteries in Islam is that who, who, who are this we? Who are the we? The Quran says who is we. I don't think there's actually anybody concisely that knows who this we is. And that's a problem because we're 1500 years in yeah. to the religion of Islam and we can't figure out who is the we. Yeah. And what's going on? As in there's a, because that's such an important factor. It is an important factor. Such an important factor. Because Allah is referring to sort of a plural, but our God does that as well. But not all the time. Uh, for example, when, when we say who is the we, sometimes they say uh, the, the, the royal aspect where the queen says one does this or one yeah. does that. No, I understand that. In other verses, the Quran, God speaks directly, says but I have done this. I would say the problem is that the, the royal we, or the expression of the royal we, doesn't come along until at least the 12th century. So that's way after the Quran's written. So now we have a problem. Like, why is the original Quran had those words "we" as in that was the because the, the words were originally from what we have from the Prophet. That's what is. Yeah, yeah I, I understand what you're saying, what but you, sorry, I thought you meant. No, no. My point was that the words "we" the, the, the use of the term in a royal "we" sense, it's not used in a royal "we" sense until the 12th century. In, 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 so the Quran must be referring to a plurality because it makes no sense that we're using a, a form of language that doesn't exist at the time. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand. I, understand. I mean, I, I, I've not looked into it deeply, but that is one of the arguments used by by modern Islam. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, so, how do you view, I guess, the the, the, the denial of Judaism for the main part of Jesus's uh, coming? Um, I don't think it's a denial of Judaism. For example, no, like, as in, uh, ju sorry, Judaism denies. Oh, Judea or, well, again, like, Judaism most of Judaism today comes from the Talmud. The Talmud was written in 300 AD. So this is well after Jesus, 100 years after Jesus, in fact. Right. And that's their tradition. Their tradition is Talmudic, right? And we've got early Jews, for example, the testimony of early Jews before that. For example, I oh, can't remember his name. going to have to get up. I'll get up later. I'm not just going to say it. But basically, like, we've got the early Jews who are Christians. Like, for example, um, Peter was a Jew. He says he was a Benjaminite. But Paul was a Jew. Most of the apostles are Jews, most of their disciples are Jews. 
So we got we got the, these followers leaving that in mass, and this is historical. You can find this historical. It's not just me making it up out of my head because, right? but it's historical that Jews, a majority of Jews, left Judaism, and these these are just as ardent for their faith as Muslims would be. So they wouldn't just leave their faith for no reason, but they left their faith because they were convinced that a man had risen from the dead, and that man claimed to be that Jewish Messiah. Not Messiah. Not only that, but he claimed to be God. And this is why you find later writings of the, the church fathers that claim that Jesus is actually God. I think, you know, obviously we, we as, as a follower of the Quran, we have issues with the fact that whether he did die or he was just crucified, the, the difference yeah. between being dead yeah. and being crucified is a different thing. So you can be crucified, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be or killed. Right, um, but the problem is Jesus says in, in the Bible that he will be killed. In and this it, book? In, in Matthew, he says that, from what I've read. One of the yeah, in one of the Gospels. And there are other Gospels where he says it as well. I don't want to reverse so One, one thing I, I genuinely want to know is, <clears throat> how old was Noah when he was ordered by God to build the ark? How old was Noah? Do, do, you, do you know how old he was? Not off, there, not there was stop my head. In the Quran that says he was hundreds of years old. I, I know that he was hundreds of years old. Hundred, eight hundred, yeah, I, I, along those lines. Now here's what boggles me. Yeah. Do we have a time frame as to when Noah was alive? Is there a time frame like linear in terms of like now today this is 2022? Was Noah alive say 5,000 years ago or 10,000? Is there a, do you do you have a reference point? I don't have a reference point. So I, I won't be able to. That might know. Do you think? I think like Kent Hovind. Have you heard of Kent Hovind? So Kent Hovind's a YouTuber. He's a, he's a Christian. But he does a lot of stuff on the genealogy of Adam and stuff like that and genealogy of Noah. So he would know that because he's, he's a young earth creationist. So he believes that the earth is young and that it's, it's, it was created. He's, he's a Christian, but he would know the, that kind of stuff. I, I don't, that's not really my area. I don't really know the... What, what, one thing that doesn't make sense to me, for example, if somebody is really, really tall, imagine somebody was as tall as that tree right. walking amongst us. When we describe that man or woman, right. we would say, the first thing you'd say is that person is really tall, abnormally tall. Right. And you'd make sure that everybody understands that. But what doesn't make sense is it, um, if it's mentioned in the Bible about in terms of how old these prophets were, I don't think there's a point where it says they were abnormally old. As in, the rest of humanity lived to say 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, or 100 years old, whereas these, because they were prophets, they were able to live longer. Nothing like that exists, so that tells you one thing. Either these prophets were gifted with long life on purpose, or the concept of age is different. Like the concept of actually long age is different, and we're thinking about it in a different way. I, I, I would say this: there is a there is the idea of the because remember the Garden of Eden, for example, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were granted eternal life, so they would have lived longer than they did. But God says to him, "You will surely die if you eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil." Right? So that like Adam, you see, he lives to eight hundred. But he's already, he's, he's already lived a long while because in the Garden of Eden he was sustained for that long. And what, what, one, of the, the, um, sorry, one of the ways young earth creations will get about that, and it's just their idea of it basically, is genetic decay. Over time, when, when we as human beings, we de decay genetically. So basically those who lived during the time of Adam would have been able to live for long periods of time. But as gradual gen genetic decay happened, well, and as, as generations passed and they mixed genetically, that genetic de decay took over and they couldn't live as long as they did before. That's why you find like Abraham cannot live past the age of like 200. But even, let's say 200, <clears throat> the fact that today we have modern science and modern medicine, what? we should technically be able to live longer than people thousands of years ago. They didn't have the medical advances. Yeah, that's and why I use a genetic time, decay the argument because Adam and Eve were to live for a very long time. According to, to the, the Bible, it says that God had planned for them to live eternally. That's why the tree of life was there and they were sustained for that long period of time. That's what I think God's original plan was. But he cast them out and he cursed the ground, therefore they themselves genetically decayed and their generations genetically decayed. So, so do you believe that these were actual physical linear real events that happened in the past? Like for example, there was a world flood. Uh, um, and, you know, were, were these Bible stories, I mean, it does say with these are parables. Yeah, there, there are parables. parables. To teach you something. Yeah, you can, again, we have, there are two parables. views, because I'm not, I'm not going to say that my view is the sole Christian view. There are two views. There's a view of like old earth creation, creationists who believe the earth was created, but they don't believe Ad uh, the Adam and Eve story or the Genesis was a literal flood and all that stuff. Right? They don't believe right. in that. And then there's young earth creationists who do believe there was a literal flood. Right? I'm kind of like in between, I'm still studying it because it's something I haven't really gotten into. <laughs> it's, it's a good question, you caught me there because I haven't really studied it.
Fully. Because there, there was a guy called Bill Donahue. He was around in the 80s. He's still around. He's still got a YouTube channel, but he's very old now. Right. And he has a whole entire series of videos where he goes through literally <coughs> the Bible stories and how they are actually talking about us. The human journey. Like, as an example, the book of Moses. Or, not the book of Moses, sorry. The, the story of Moses. And how he uh, rescued the children of Israel. Right. From Pharaoh and kind of what Pharaoh was doing to them. And the whole point, the whole process of rescuing the children of Israel, it actually boils down to what we have individually, where we rescue ourselves from the conscious mind that is always giving in to desire and sin and what we do. When we push our our psyche into doing things that, for example, innately we shouldn't be doing, and therefore something, an idea, Moses would come and rescue that side of you. Right. I guess, I guess the problem with yeah. taking it parabolistically or just taking it for like an interpretation, in that interpretation sense, is the problem is we're talking about people of that time and how they would have interpreted it. And that's why it's good to like, because I, I believe the early church fathers were nuanced. They, they either believed in young earth creation, they believed in literal Genesis, Genesis, or they didn't. So they have two different views. But even before that, the Jews themselves believed in like a literal creation story. Or, or at least the Talmud that Jews did believe in a, a literal creation story. So I, I believe it sides more with it, less being, more being literal and less being parables. In a sense, and, and okay. it's, it's just like if I went to the Quran and made up a load of parables about saying that basically the story of, of, of Luke, for example, Lot, for example, is just basically the story of how mankind are brought into the earth through intercession, not intercession, sorry, incest through <laughs> succession generations. Like I can, we can all do that, but it's about what's literal and, and the audience you're talking about. Because then the books of Moses written to the people at the time of Moses, these were Israelites. So you've got to take those things into account as well. Mm. Thank you. No problem, man. I've got other things, but it's not. Oh, wait, well, can I give you something? I just want to give you this because it's, it's about basically Jesus' deity in the Bible, in the Quran, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. And then this, if you want it. Right. Have a look through that. It's just basically about Jesus in the Quran. And if you've got any questions about it, man, come back to me. I'm here like, most weeks. <laughs> I think we had a conversation a while back, maybe a couple of months ago. Oh. You, you were over there, but because you're here every week, you speak to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah I know, <laughs> the brain's good. <laughs> I'm, I, I do see um, the whole journey as more being more inner. Yeah. I think, for example, if there, imagine there was a book, a right. book which came from out there, which was a revelation, something that we could not make up, and this was actually from God. You'd expect that book to be individually enlightening. Right. That, that's what I would want. I, I would want God to bring that and, and enlighten me individually, you individually, him individually, where you can actually in, be enlightened. Understandable. It has to be talking about you. Because if you go through a lot of things and you'd expect God, your creator, to know those things. Understandable. Now, the more I look at these books, the Quran, the Torah, the Psalms, the Gospels, the, depending on how accurate obviously, the, the, the historical recordings of them are, the more you look at them, the more I see it from an inner point of view. Mm. It's like you're talking about you, because there are things going on inside you you have no control over. Right. How your organs work, for example, how you go to bed, how, how your body regulates itself. It's not under you. You're not controlling anything. All you are, all I am, we are passengers in an Uber car telling the Uber yeah. car where to go. We are a rational soul, that's what Athanasius says. Saint Athanasius says we are a rational soul. Really strange. As in, if you can't if you think about it that way, where you are not in control, you are created yeah. and you're here for a purpose, what is that purpose? Why are we here? Exactly, and we all want to find out. Yeah, yeah it's not a problem for us. But I'll, I'll, if, if I can I'll leave you with one more thing because uh, yeah. um, like are you are you Sunni? Shia? What are you? Um, neither. Neither. I, so you, I follow just revelation of God. Okay, fair enough. Just revelation of God. So I, I would say this. Look, the Quran itself, and, and this, I think, has been a big contradiction for why I'm I not convinced by it. That's the thing. I, I do follow, for example, if we can prove that there is a Torah that is from back then and is accurate, I will follow the Torah because the Quran says the Torah is guidance and life. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was my point. The Quran yeah. does say that the Jews and Christians have a book. They have forms of literature. But the problem is, like, and, and by the way, it says in the Quran that that the Jews and Christians don't read the books they have. This is through a 5 verse 68, right? Yeah. So my, my problem is, like, they're being told to read body, bodies of literature, right? That were in existence during the time of Muhammad, because they would have had to have been in order to convey that message, right? Yeah. We have copies of the Sinaiticus, the Vi Vinaiticus. These are manuscripts of, of the Bible, by the way. You know? Sinaiticus? <laughs> Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and Vinaiticus, right? right? These all date 4th and 3rd century. 
I think the, the Vaticanus is first century. And they've been scientifically proven to be from that time? Yes, according, according to scientists from that time, yes. They so date from back. the time when the Quran came down, for example, let's say the Quran came down 1500 years ago. Right. Well, let's say it did, but yeah. Do we have copies of the Gospels from that point? And from it's been carbon dated to say, look, the, the Gospels of, let's say we had a Gospel, and scientists came and proved that the, by based on carbon dating, we can actually prove that this Gospel is from 1500 years ago. Because if we can, then as a Muslim, I am told to follow, well, not follow, I, 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 I'm told that that, that that book was given to Jesus and it contains guidance. Right, no, I, I understand what you're saying. The problem but... is, how, did, how can we prove no, that the Gospel saying. is the original one? Well, first of all, like, you understand that paper or papyrus, it degenerates over time. We're talking hundreds of years here, right? And what happens, uh, God bless you, sister. What happens is over time, and, and this is a poor community, Christians were a poor community, they weren't rich, right? So, for example, the Quran, in relation to like, they had like animal skins. They had caliphs and stuff who were able to write the Quran on animal skins. So that's why you find like, those Quran, I think is, I uh, can't remember what it's called, the top copy, I think it is. The oldest? The oldest, apparently. I think it's in Birmingham, they might have um, museum They claim that's the oldest, well, but there's a lot of problems. Claim it. There's a problem, there's a lot of problems with Birmingham, and they're only really two sawers, really. Or two pages with a couple of sawers on them. But basically, the, the, my point was, basically, that paper over time degrades. So how do we follow a tradition? We follow it for, through, through the, those who are given the guidance and those who follow them. Just like the Quran, you have all transmitted. For example, Hafs, the 1924 Hafs Quran you've got, is from Hafs. Hass was, Hass was a reciter, he's related to other reciters who had the Quran, and the Quran was originally recited. It wasn't just written on paper, right? There's a claim in Hadith that it was, but it doesn't say that in the Quran. That's like, no. in either way. Like, I've made this argument before, I've made this point before, that men are fallible. Right. Men are fallible, we are not prophets, we are not, as in messengers, we, we are not from God directly. And because of our fallibility, we have to question what is very passed down by other men as opposed to what was actually revealed by God. I understand, but you, you yourself as a Muslim would have to like, apply that same, that same concept to your Quran as well. Because your Quran is already transmitted. It wasn't just in book form, sent down from heaven. It was already transmitted. Yes, good point. However, in the Quran it does say, we will preserve this book. Right. But it doesn't say we will preserve any other book. And that's the interesting thing. As in, the, 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 the Quran testifies to itself that it will be preserved. Right, but, what, the Quran, but it also says it the, the, like, the Gospel and Torah on the Umm al-Khattab. I think it does. As in what? The correct? Yeah, the, the mother of the book. Do you know the Umm al-Khattab? Uh, I can't remember that verse, but... Yeah, that, the, the Quran says, I, I know the Torah the Quran says, says that there's an original yeah. Umm al-Khattab or a mother of the book where the Torah and the Gospel are on there. Right, along with the, the, the scriptures, right? And the Quran seems to be claiming that Jews and Christians, rather than corrupting the scripture, because it doesn't say we've corrupted it, it says we interpret it wrong. That's what I get out yeah, of there's, there's surahs like, like surah 289. The, the Lagan would say the Talmud is what the Quran is talking about, where they decided to reinterpret the Torah and bring the Talmud and right. bring their religion. So and I, I, I can agree with that. Case, then the Quran will be correct, because yes, they did reinterpret, they did misinterpret and misread. And, and, and I would in that sense, if you're putting an extreme tradition next to God's word, then yes. But the problem is we have the Gospels, and the Gospels, the, the gospels themselves, have a, they have a tradition, they have people following them. They're not just alone. The Gospels? Yeah, the gospel itself, they're not right. just alone. And what, what the Quran says in chapter 3, verse 55, is that Allah will make those who follow Jesus the uppermost. So that there you have a contradiction. Either Allah has providentially guided Christians to be misled into believing that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that he is God, or they didn't. That's a massive contradiction. I don't think it's said. I, I I don't think we're we're, we're 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 to believe that Jesus Christ died and physically came back to life. No, I know you don't believe that. But what I'm yeah. saying is he sent down the gospel and the Torah, right? And these do say that. Yeah. And remember, they have a tradition for him. And what did I say before? Like it says in chapter three, verse fifty-five of the Quran, that Allah guides who those who follow Jesus, who make those who follow Jesus the uppermost. That becomes a problem for modern Islam, to be honest, because when you say that, then that obviously puts a massive issue in terms of the hadiths that they follow yeah. that contradict that. Yeah. Whereas what it should be is that any hadith or any kind of uh, books that contradict the Quran, the Quran should at that point supersede it because the Quran is more important. But what you're doing is you're assuming that the, the Quran superseded. Well, well I'm, I'm trying to get no, to a position. It that's a, but, but it doesn't. I understand that's your position, but I'm trying to get you to think, like, 
more clearly about this because it's in, a, in a sense the Quran's making claims right and anybody can make claims I can make a claim right now that I'm the Prophet Muhammad and I've come down from heaven right but that doesn't give you the, anybody else any Muslim here the right to believe that I am right no that will so, be in your own mind and you can think what you want right I but guess. I guess the problem would be is that this this Quran is coming 600 years later after the bodies of text that Allah supposedly sent down right the problem is yeah. these bodies of text are contradicting the Quran. The Quran, the Quran says in Surah 9.30, for example, that Allah is a father to no one. Yet you read the Old Testament and, Jesus, and, and God says he's a father to Israel. And the New Testament, Jesus, Jesus has a father and that father is, is the God. Yeah, see that <clears throat> does need to be explained a lot. And I think that's part of the study. I'm, I'm, I'm part of that journey. I'm part of the studying. Um, and I hope one day it'll become clear. And I'm here I, to, I hope it does, man. Speak. I, 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 honestly, I, I'm here to learn. Yeah. I, I never put myself above anyone. But I think there's some... That's, that's a good trait, by the way. It's a brilliant trait. I think, I'd say it's a Christian trait. I wouldn't say it's a Muslim one. Well, it's a submitter. Anybody who submits directly to God, I think that's probably what you have to do. But you're saying you, you put yourself above truth, right? So no, no, you put you put, you put yourself below truth, right? So that means you're yes, you're, you're trying at least yes. to seek truth, and that's, and that, that's a humble Christian truth. Person, if the truth presents itself and you don't submit to it, then you need to question yourself: what is going on? What am I actually? Am I following a cult that uh, that stops me from following truth, or am I actually seeking truth? Well, I would say you are following a cult. I'm just going to be honest, but. Well, Again, it's God, up to God you. Knows God knows best. I mean, if, if, if it is, then I think the same way where the cult, if it is a cult, the same way the cult came into existence, it can be taken out of existence as well. I can, it can be dispelled. What? Right. The, the, the traditions can be dispelled if that is the will of God. But and, and we have to go with that will. Right. In a way, I think. So, so when new things come, we follow it, we question it. And we hold it you up should always spirit. question, yeah. and it's if, important if, to question as well. If you are buying a diamond, let's say this is a diamond, yeah. and you are buying this, you want to make sure that this is a diamond, so you look at it from all angles. What? You actually you, you inspect the diamond, because you want to make sure you invested in this thing. And that poses a problem for a lot of people, yeah, both on the Judaism, the Christian, the Muslim side. Right. By not questioning their faith, when, I, when, when, when we ask them, why is this certain thing? What about this? What about that? When they cannot look at it the other way, they become emotional, they become uh, uh, angry because you're questioning something mm. that will will test their no notion of what they think they hold. Well, the Bible says, always be ready to give a, give a defense of that hope is, that is inside you. And we have that hope in Jesus Christ. And if you can't defend it, what? if you know there's something wrong, then you have to investigate it first. Investigate, find the truth. And if the truth is something else, then you have to move on. Because the truth is God. Yes. And if you're seeking God, you seek the truth. I 100% agree with that, man. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. Right. But I, I, I would suggest look into that more, right? That, the argument I was speaking to. It's a pleasure, man. We'll God bless you, man. Well, I, had a, well, I had a pretty good conversation with okay. the Muslim What's there. About? It's basically about, um, we just had a conversation about the Bible and the Quran. I see we're going through the history of the Bible, the history of the Quran. <laughs> um, generally just discussing different topics. Um, yeah, so I, I like those conversations that are actually fruitful rather than just engaging in mindless petty insults and attacking. Muslims, you won't get far doing that and you're not, in, in, you're not really expressing any true faith that anybody would want to follow. I mean, yeah. You'd want to have a faith that people should genuinely believe in and they should connect to you. And nobody's going to want to connect to violence and attacks unless they're mentally all of it. But um, yeah, I, I think generally, I think a Muslim will do well yeah. And yeah, my brain's run out of energy, so I'm going to stop. God bless. Cut.